Well, thank you very much for inviting me tonight. It's a big honor. And uh, what I wanted to talk tonight is, are we ready for the future of mobility? And let me maybe start with a test question to the audience. Who does not own a vehicle in this audience? Does not own a vehicle? Doesn't seem to be that there's anybody. Right? <laughs> Who owns a bicycle? OK, many people. <laughs> So what I want to basically base my talk on today is to discuss um, a very provocative hypothesis that in the future um, we may not need to own a car any longer. And so if you think through your own life, how do you have to reorganize your life so that you don't, do not need to own a car? So it's not just a question whether we uh, whether the self-driving vehicle is working. It's actually, are we ready for a service model where that is possible? And you can imagine if you make a decision not to own a car, then the automotive industry has to reorganize and a lot of things will be different. So let's kind of look into this, what that actually means. And uh, I'm ready then uh, to discuss that in more detail in a little bit. So what you see here in this picture is a team, a Clemson team, that I uh, really enjoy working with. And they developed a self-driving vehicle. This picture was taken just a few weeks ago at a test track here close by. And um, actually, we could see that the self-driving vehicle technology is actually working. So I'm not saying that it works under all circumstances, but the car industry is getting ready to deploy these technology to us. And so now coming back to this topic of whether you need to own a vehicle. So let's assume you have a vehicle that can come to you, pick you up when you need to go to work, or is bringing you food when you need something from the supermarket, or uh, basically can do anything you need and fulfills your mobility services. And I want to give you a couple of statistics which are quite interesting. So <coughs> the average uh, number of vehicles that a U.S. household has is two. So they, on average you own two vehicles per household. Uh, one car per month costs on average $700. So you can already think about, if you have two cars on average, you spend $1,400 per month. Now if you reorganize and if you pay for a service, and just to give you a comparison, per mile an Uber service costs about $2, you could already cover a couple of hundred miles. Another interesting statistic is, that 40% of all road trips in the US are less than two miles. So, and I see it where I live, so if people are going to church when it's less four miles, or that had, may have some reasons, they're going to buy something at a drugstore, and um, there are, I mean, there are a lot of short trips, so we have to think this also through. So what I want to, uh, in the next picture, basically come back to, the implication um, for the industry if we have very high demand for self-driving vehicles. What does this mean? So it basically means that a lot of these key components that are highlighted here, camera systems, sensors, uh, GPS systems, electric steering and braking systems, or the network connectivity to data centers in the cloud, all these components uh, will become very relevant. And uh, so if we, if we look here around the supply chain, are we ready for this? Or do we need to make some changes? Um, if we build a car that is self-driving, do we have to test it in a different way? All these are questions. The other thing that is very important is <coughs> All these services require, at the end of the day, also that you have a smartphone or some form of communication. So interesting enough, when you look at the statistics, the average household in the US owns, wonder, wonder, about two smartphones. So we, have, we own on average two cars and we have two smartphones. 
So if you want to order uh, an Uber or Lyft, what do you use? A smartphone. So it becomes very essential that you're connected and you ha you're using this technology. But interesting enough, if you use that technology, you don't necessarily need to have a car. And so that's my case. So when we look further into these curves here, um, it's quite interesting. So uh, around the year 2009-10 is when the first generation of electrical vehicles came to the market. And everybody was complaining, well, there's not enough range and the batteries are getting on fire and all kinds of issues, right? And only a really small percentage of the market uh, share was uh, electric or plug-in hybrid vehicles. Now in the meantime, um, uh, there are billions of dollars being invested in vehicle electrification. But, and this is now again, whether you drive an electric vehicle or a normal ve non-electric vehicle doesn't help you with car ownership. So it's still a car and so one is drives electric, the other not. So what makes the difference is with car ownership uh, are the services there to actually uh, relieve you from the need to own a car. And that's the second curve here. The second curve shows that very quickly, even after the first generation electrical vehicles came to the market, we started exploring Uber and Lyft and other services. And guess what? People are using it, in particular in urban areas, but now re uh, also in rural areas where may maybe I don't have another option. I don't have a bus system or something like that. So very quickly we saw that the consumer are using these services and these services are being adopted and actually now, I think Uber is going IPO very soon, um, these become very, very big companies. And that adoption happened very quickly. Now, when you heard Chris Urmson in the video before talking about self-driving vehicles, every single major OEM now is not only experimenting with self-driving vehicles, they're actually putting money for the deployment of these vehicles, and there are billions of dollars being invested right now. However, we are at the beginning of this development and it will take, as you can see here, many, many years until this um, basically becomes a standard. And to be also very honest, um, you need to have certain rules, how these vehicles are being operated. So you, we cannot just push a button and in all situations this car can operate. There are certain rules and regulations that have to be in place so that this works, but this is currently being worked on by many committees and organizations. So again, the technology is getting ready. Now, if we are looking at this picture, I wanted to make another case. Um, so interesting enough, coming back to statistics, um, last year, um, 17 million vehicles, new vehicles were sold in the US and about the same amount of uh, bicycles were sold. Now, interesting enough, the average American, I think, f no, 15% of all the Americans are using the bicycle once a year. So, so obviously we are using much more cars. I wanted to make a case with this picture. This picture is taken in a very nice community in Florida called Seaside, which is a new urbanist community which is designed that you can walk it and you can use bicycles and you should not use your car. Now, interesting enough, uh, many, many trips can be done by a bicycle. And I told you before, 40% of all car trips are less than two miles. There's another point that, and this is another interesting correlation, 70, more than 70% of all American men are overweight. Okay, and women a little bit less. But that means that doing exercise, walking, using the bicycle when it actually can be done is good for your health. So we can actually have an impact on healthcare cost. We do have currently not enough money to fix our roads, so there could be actually an offset of these health costs. And I just wanted to kind of hint this, this is, these are interesting relationships. 
So what this shows you, you have very traditional ways of uh, coming from A to B on short distances, which is a bicycle, for example, or walking. And then in the future, with self-driving vehicles, you have an option, and the car can comes to you. It can bring you things, it can bring you somewhere else. So if you're using all these options, I would make the case that it's worthwhile, I thought, not to own a car. But everybody would have to make a significant change. And I want to close with a video. So if you are ready to put your children in such a vehicle to bring them to school, and uh, then I think we have arrived <laughs> in the future. Uh, thank you very much for the attention.